In this video, we're going to talk about central line dressing changes. Now, in this particular video, we're going to look um, at a, a central line on the subclavian vein, but the same strategy is also used for a pick line in the arm. Just remember the dressing should be changed every seven days or as needed. So first things first, once you've gathered all your supplies on the bedside table, you're going to apply a mask to yourself and the patient. Now, sometimes the kit comes with a mask inside of it, but I always grab extra masks and do this step first just for safety and infection control purposes. So make sure that you have the patient turn their head away from the site as you're removing the old dressing. That just keeps them from breathing on it or coughing on it um, and just helps prevent infection. You want to remove the dressing towards the insertion site to help keep from accidentally pulling it out. Now once you have the dressing off, if you have any kind of securing device like a stat lock for a pick line, you can actually take that off at this point as well. Just grab a piece of tape and lay it over the tubing just to hold everything in place while you are working on the dressing change. You also want to remove the old bio patch at this point and inspect the site for any signs of possible infection. Now you're going to remove your clean gloves and wash your hands and then you can begin opening your sterile dressing change kit. Most facilities do have a kit for this, um, but if yours don't, just make sure that you have all of the individual supplies ready. So open the sterile kit in sterile fashion. Make sure that you start by opening it away from you. Keep that table really close to you so that you don't have to turn your back on it. Sometimes if it's a complicated uh, situation, I'll actually put the table closer to the head of the bed so I can keep it in front of me. So make sure that you only touch the outside one inch of that kit. Sometimes it fights with you, so do the best you can. Then you want to grab the sterile glove pack off the top of the kit. That's a hard thing for somebody, but if you push down and pinch it, usually that's a good way to get it out. So you want to put on your sterile gloves. If you do need a review um, on how to put on sterile gloves, we do have a whole video lesson on that. So make sure that you go check that out so that you're really confident with sterile gloving procedures. It just takes practice, honestly. So once you have both of your sterile gloves on, you can uh, remember that you can touch anything that's sterile. So even the inside of that package, you can grab it and throw it away. So again, only touch the inside of the sterile package. You wanna grab your antiseptic swabs in your kit. Usually there's a pack of three of them. You're gonna use all three of them to clean the site. First one, you'll scrub vertically from left to right. Then you'll scrub horizontally from top to bottom. And then you want to scrub in a circular motion from the center out. Remember the biggest thing here is that you must let it dry. Don't wave it, don't blow on it, just let it dry. That is when the bacteria die. So now, once you have it clean, you can apply your new bio patch. Most of the bio patches are blue to the sky. They have a little blue side. So again, just make sure you're following manufacturer instructions in case yours is a little bit different. So when you apply a bio patch, put the slit around the catheter and under it, but don't twist it around too much, otherwise you risk pulling it out. Now speaking, so now you can put uh, your dressing on. So um, these tegaderms actually are activated with heat and friction. So once you apply it over the site, um, give it a little press and a little rub to make sure that it sticks. And sometimes these big dressings will have an extra piece of tape on them, so you can actually grab that extra piece of tape and use that to help secure your line. So depending on your facility policy, most facilities also require that you change the infusion caps when you change the dressing. So the big thing to know here is make sure that those lines are clamped and that the new caps are primed with saline before you flush the line. That way you're not flushing little bitty air boluses into the patient. The more there are and the bigger they are, the more likely to give the patient an air embolus. So once you've changed all of the caps, depending on how many um, lines you have, you can time, date, and initial your dressing. Sometimes the dressing comes with a little sticker so that you can use that as well. So time, date, and initial, and then you can discard your supplies and document what you did. 
So that's it. It is a sterile procedure, but don't let it intimidate you. You guys are going to be awesome at this. Just keep practicing. All right, guys, go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.